Hello everyone. Today's topic is gate analysis. The first subtopic is gate parameters. Here are contents. For gate analysis, there are three subtopics plus introduction. I will explain basic terminology of gate in introduction of gate, and then we will study gate parameters and determinants. Finally, we will study pathological gate as an example of application. In this video, the contents are introduction of gate and gate parameters. First, we will talk about what is gate. As the avatar is walking, gate is locomotion using limbs. Locomotion means the movement of an animal to move one place to another, in this case for humans. Gate also means the style of walking. Different people have different gait. During walking, humans repeat the same motion. The repeated motion is gait cycle and also called stride, so that one gait cycle is one stride. Then n gait cycle is n strides. We can observe the gait cycle or stride again and again during walking. One gait cycle is divided into two phases, the stand phase and swing phase. The stand phase is from heel strike to toe off. Please look at the right blue leg of the avatar. And swing phase is from toe off to heel strike. The period of the stance phase is also called contact time. What are the heel strike and toe off? They are important gauge events. Heel strike happens when the initial contact is made between the heel and ground after the swing phase. And toe off happens when your toe is off the ground after the foot pushes the ground to move forward. In the gait cycle, two heel strike and two toe off exist because we humans have two legs, right and left leg. There are two types of gait parameters, temporal spatial parameters and angular parameters. Temporal spatial parameters are related to time, length, and linear movement. Number of steps, step time, step length, gait velocity, and etc. And angular parameters are related to angular movement of joints, such as hip, knee, and ankle's angles, and their angular velocities. Now, we will see the definition of the step. The step is when the foot makes the contact to the ground. When the left foot does, it is the left step. When the right foot does, it is the right step. The step time for the left leg is from right heel strike to left heel strike. The right step time is from left heel strike to right heel strike. So, the number of steps is the same as the number of heel strikes. And there are two steps in one gait cycle, which is one stride, so that the sum of left and right step time is one stride time. In average, a twice of a step time is a stride time. When we try to count the step with the extent system, this graph shows the center of mass of the avatar in z axis, which is the vertical axis. As you see, the center of mass oscillates up and down during walking. We can also see the center of mass is down when heel strike occurs. So we can count the number of valleys in order to count steps. The number of valleys is 10, meaning that there were 10 steps. With this graph, we can also calculate step time measuring the period between one to another valley. You can find the frame number and time on the right bottom. The stride time is sum of nearest two steps. You also have the average step time 0.550 seconds and the stride time 1.1 seconds. As I mentioned, the average stride time is a double of the average step time. The first step time was excluded because 
the first step time can cause errors. Even if there is a valley, it is not a hill strike, and we don't know when the first step starts using this graph. Next, we will see the stride length and step length. First, we need the footprints of one's walking. The idea is measure the length between footprints. If you measure two footprints from the same foot, this is the stride length. If you measure two footprints from one foot to the other foot, this is a step length. You can measure the length with the heel to heel or toe to toe method. However, Excel system offers the foot positions referring to ankle positions. So using Excel system, you can measure the stride and step length with ankle to ankle method. Unlike the heel position, the ankle position is changing in stance phase. You have to get the position at the moment when heel strike occurs. Right step length is from the previous left footprint to the right footprint. Left step length is from the previous right footprint to the left footprint in the walking direction. When measuring step width, we also measure the width between an anchor and the other anchor recorded when heel strike occurs. Here you remember, when you study gait analysis, you have to hear different terminology, but sometimes it is the same. For example, step width and walking base is the same meaning. We are also interested in gait velocity. For this, we need to measure the travel distance and the duration of walking. So, gait velocity is the travel distance over the duration, the final time minus the initial time. In reality, we need to vector calculation in two-dimensional space. So we take transverse plane to observe the same walking we watched before. To measure the walking distance and duration, we need to take the initial position and time. And we have the final position and time. We have the difference of x and y position and time. And we will calculate the distance. And this is the travel velocity by dividing the travel distance by the time difference. The cadence is the number of steps per minute. So count steps. It is a 10 steps and divided by the walking duration. When we convert the time from the second to minute, we have a cadence. And the avatar cadence is 108.735 steps per minute. Now we move on the angular parameters. It is more complicated to get angular parameters than temporal spatial parameters. The temporal spatial parameters we saw before can be measured with one sensor, where the angular parameters can be measured with more than two sensors. The graph shows the angles of the hip, knee, and ankle of the left leg. The blue box is for one gait cycle, which is important to compare different types of gait. For example, it is used in a comparison between the young and the old, or between the healthy and patients. For the comparison of different types of gait, you can also use the angle-angle diagram. Here is the angle-angle diagrams between hip and knee angles, as an example. The avatar is observed in the center plane and the diagrams are shown in the left bottom and right bottom for the left and right leg respectively. For both, the lower right parts in the red circles are the initial contact. These diagrams are useful in measuring mechanisms and the coordination of the joint. 
as well as in the determining one's gait. This is the end of the video, so thank you for your attention.